Welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at mostly the external features as well as the accessories that you get with the Sawaski SLC 10x42 binoculars. For the full review that contains full details of the, the optics used, the, the, you know, the, the quality of the coatings, as well as the glass, the technical specifications, please take a look in the comment section below of this video that contains a link to the full review on my website. And I have to uh, apologize for the noise on this video today. As you can see, I'm, I'm out on a farm um, and there's some, you know, it's, it's high. I think they're preparing for the uh, next year's summer. So they're doing a lot of pruning of the um, nut trees behind me. So there's a little background noise, but um, that's a price you have to pay sometimes for living in the country. The ocular lens cover or rain guard is quite a lot different to that which I find on most other binoculars in that it's, it's made from a hard plastic as opposed to quite often they're made from a, a soft rubber and has a ratchet system as opposed to just a flexible rubber bridge um, that allows you to um, match the, the distance of the, the eye cups over here um, to fit over the eye cups um, no matter what setting you, you've, you've set your binoculars to match the distance between your eyes. Um, as with most of the accessories on, the, on these binoculars, it's made very well. Um, it fits nice and securely over the actual the eye cups themselves and thus shouldn't come away very easily by accident. And it does, does an excellent job of, of um, protecting the, the lenses. The objective Below. lens covers are made from a soft rubber, um, which is, looks far more robust and, and thicker than what you get on most other binoculars. Um, like most binoculars, however, it, it fits over the ends of the barrels quite simply, um, but the fit itself is, is really nice and secure, and thus shouldn't come away by accident too easily. Um, they have a little tab on the top over here that just makes it a bit simpler to, you know, flick it off. What's really nice um, is the, the loop that you, um, around the, the actual barrel of the binocular, in that, you know, when you're glassing you can just have the uh, cover hanging down below the binocular, um, out of the way, but always handy so that you can quickly and easily replace them uh, when you finish glassing and thus keep your, your you know, important lenses and their coatings as protected as, as much as possible. The rubber itself is, is, is quite a, you know, a tacky rubber in, in that it, it, it does attract quite a lot of uh, dust and dirt, as you, I don't know if you can see on the video there, you know, but you know, that's a really small thing. Um, what I do like about the style of, of cover is that you know should for any reason you you, you not want your um, them to be hanging around below the binocular that you know it's quite easy for you to remove them and put them away in your bag um, and have a your binocular looking at have a lot cleaner look to your binocular you know, should you wish the SLC binocular itself has a fairly standard roof prism design in that the ocular lenses line up nice and in straight line with the objective lenses um, a slight difference is that the, 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 they have a single bridge at the top which is quite thin um, and located uh, quite a lot closer to the actual eyepieces than the objective lenses. Um, this is, you know, I've, has a nice feeling to it and that it leaves quite a lot of this part of the bottom bottom over here uh, of the barrel exposed so that you know, there's plenty to hold on to um, when you're using your binocular or when you're just carrying them around single handed like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of surface area to hold on to, and you know, have a nice secure grip on them. If you're not carrying them around your neck with a, a neck strap or something like that, the body itself uh, is, is completely waterproof, um, as you would expect on a binocular of this class. Um, it is filled with a, a dry gas, which prevents internal fogging of the of the lenses. Um, the the rubberized covering on the on the outside of the the chassis. Is, is nice and thick, so it offers plenty of protection. It is also put on really well. You know, sometimes um, on, on some binoculars, I find that it, it, it moves about a bit. This is, there's no such, you know, there's no chance of this happening on, on these, this pair of binoculars. The, it, it, as you can see, it has a, a fine texture on the, on the actual um, um, the rubber armor itself. Um, this just adds a bit more grip to the, you know, to the actual rubber itself. Um, what is also important to, to mention here is, um, as well as protection, uh, this rubberized armor it provides um, 
uh, a little bit of sound, you know, sound dampening, I guess you call it, in that. So, for example, if you had, um, you know, sometimes like my wedding ring, um, if, if you didn't have any rubber here and you, you, you knocked it against a, a metal chassis, it would make a noise which, uh, you know, could lead to you, you know, frightening away some sort of uh, timid birds or, or animals. On top of that, it's, it's a lot less reflective than, um, it, uh, than, than a metal, um, exposed metal uh, barrel. Um, once again, this helps to start, cut down reflections, which also could frighten away or, or give away your location um, should you re need to remain hidden. The two thumb indents underneath the underneath the barrels, you know, positioned nicely, just you know, just there to just encourage you to hold the binocular in the right way, and you know, so that you you get them nicely and balanced. They feel really great in the hands. You know, all in all, it's just a, a really nice looking binocular um, that's finished off really well. The twist-up eye cups on these binoculars are fantastic. Uh, as you can see, the the housing itself is made from metal. Uh, most binoculars, or a lot of binoculars these days, they, they have plastic ones. Um, this is a part of a binocular that gets damaged the most often and needs to re be replaced. So the fact that they're made from metal means that there's less chance of them being, being broken, you know, should you drop your binocular or something like that. But even if you were, as you can see, they can actually be unscrewed and taken away, which, you know, and, and replaced should you need a, a replacement. that um, which you can't actually do on, on a lot of binoculars uh, the the twist up mechanism itself is, is silky smooth there's no unwanted play at all and they it just has a really really nice feeling to them uh, with a full 16 millimeters of eye relief on these 10 by 42 versions that, that should be more than enough for most people who wear glasses to to be able to you know, you twist them down and get your eyes at the perfect distance behind the, the actual ocular lenses so that you get the full field of view. The, another thing to mention over here is uh, as long as the six, as, as well as the 16 mils of, of eye relief, uh, the, the twist up and down mechanism has an in intermediate stop like that so that um, it just gives you that much more flexibility to, to adjust them so that, to suit your own personal, you know, the, the own way your face works and if you're wearing glasses the distance that you need to get it, it right and even if that click stop wasn't quite right for you you could actually stop them at any point along fully extended and fully retracted um, position them so that you get your face exactly in the, in the right position behind it. Focus wheel is located in the standard position on the, in the center of the binoculars um, like most binoculars it turns really nice and smoothly unlike um, some some models that uh, high-end models that have a, a metal focus wheel these are this is this is made from plastic and has a, a rubber coating on it so perhaps not quite as uh, luxurious as, as you get on some having said that it, it does turn really nice and smoothly it's very smooth there's no unwanted play or movement um, you know so it, 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 it works really well and um, to adjust your focus from near to far takes as you can see here just over two full turns of the of the wheel. Uh, this is quite a, a low geared um, mechanism in that uh, to adjust from near to far takes you know quite a lot of turning, so thus a bit a bit longer time than it would for a, a more aggressively um, geared uh, mechanism. The advantage of that being though that making small adjustments to your focus to get them to actually spot on and to view an image in, in complete um, you know clarity with um, the uh, the focus perfect it's just that much easier because you know making small adjustments um, it moves the, the moves the focusing plane um, less distance than, than a, in a more aggressive um, gear unlike most binoculars that have their diopter adjustments located underneath the right eyepiece to adjust your diopter on these binoculars basically it's located within the central focus wheel and to engage it you click out the focus wheel like that and there you can see it re reveals a um, the scale and by turning that you're now adjusting the right um, the right side of the binocular independently of the left and thus by doing this you can compensate for any differences in the vision between your left and your right eyes once you have it at the right setting you simply lock it back in place and you're back to um, changing the focus on both both sides of the binocular at the same time 
Um, I really like the system in that, for one, it's, it's lockable. So once you have your setting right and you, you've fixed it, you, you can click it back in place and um, your setting remains, you know, will be the same forever. Um, having them located on the, on the right eyepiece, you, you know, they can move um, by mistake more often. On top of that, Swarovski have printed a, a full scale um, over here. I don't know if you can see that in the video over there. Um, this is again is something that you know. Should you, 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 all you have to do is remember your setting. So say it was at two, and then should should it actually get removed, moved by accident, sorry, or if you were sharing your binoculars with someone who else has a different setting, and say there was at zero, at neutral, um, it's quite easy to just quickly turn it, replace it to your setting, and turn it again. Um, this is really good because um, most most manufacturers seem to forget this, and they don't have any sort of scale. So should it move by accident, or should you share your binocular, you have to you know redo um, the test to to make it line up again, or make some sort of mark on your binocular. I like the fact that the uh, objective lenses, um, I hope you can see here, are set quite deeply uh, back from within the ends of the of the barrels. Um, this means that they they're quite well protected by the barrel from uh, you know from physical damage but as well from you know light rain for example or dust you know so it's just a bit less chance of, of, of falling and collecting onto the onto the lenses um, this means that you know you should have to clean them less often and you know less cleaning means um, they potentially will last longer in, in an absolutely pristine condition the next strap that you get with the SLC is excellent and far superior to that of most other neck strips that I that I come across. For a start, it is really well made. Um, the stitching is is you know as good as it gets. Um, see over here, it's also nicely curved so that and, and you know um, designed so that it fits nicely over the back of your shoulders and your neck, so um, fits really nicely. So make it nice and comfortable. On top of that, as you can see, plenty of padding here to make it really nice and comfortable. This part of the neck strap over here has, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a, a it's, it's quite a, it's a very grippy, grippy material, which, you know, um, as well as being well padded, it, it'll just um, stop it from slipping around in your neck. So the actual neck strap itself, um, that part of it is very, very good. But then here's, here's the nice piece over here. Um, the way it attaches to the binocular is a little different than most. And that I'll try and show you over here. Um, instead of just threading it through and having one of those um, uh, sliding, sliding adjustments, um, over here it has a little pin that fits through the, through, through the material like that. And basically what you've got to do, it's a bit fiddly to do, if I can do it quickly enough for you guys. You, you take it away like that um, on one side and you can thread your next strap basically when you're attaching it to the binocular well, then I'll just do this I won't do the eye cup just for I'm just doing this for the video to make it quick as possible so you thread it through like that then you'd readjust the pin uh, put the pin back through the, the strap through the hole like so so there you go you can see that the this is a really, you know, it, it fits really nicely and definitely won't come away. Um, and then it has a little cover that slides over the top like that to make it look all nice and neat. There we go. So as you can see that it was pretty quick to do. It's very, very secure. And then um, because it doesn't have a slider that you can't adjust the length, Swas you then have um, created this little uh, system over here where you actually have a click lock system you click like that you now that frees up the, the next strap to adjust the, the length um, to suit you um, and then once it's the right length you, you lock it back in place and um, it works really really well and and as I said this is one of the best neck straps that you can get out there um, you know just the nice fine details like that um, their logo there uh, metal logo put into the actual connector really well made and you know it's not something that you would specifically go out to buy a pair of binoculars for but it's it's nice to see that they've you know spent a good amount of effort as well as money into into making the extras you know as good as it gets the included carry case 
um, that you get with these binoculars is, as with all the other accessories on these binoculars, superb. Um, as you can see, it is really well made. Um, whilst I suppose technically it's a soft carry case, um, I would probably go as far to say it's a, it's a semi-rigid one, in that it's, you know, it stays inflated without the binoculars in there and uh, offers the binoculars inside plenty of protection. Uh, I'll, before opening them up, I'll just um, go over the, the numerous ways that you can actually um, you know, you carry them. Um, before we put on the, the included um, strap, I don't know if you see over here, there's a, a, a little place that you can hold them. So you could actually carry them in your hands like that. Um, you know, it's really secure. Um, it's you know, something really small, and but something that's obviously someone spent some time thinking about. Um, so should you not want to carry them around your neck and thing, you could just um, grab them in your hand like that. And a really nice way to hold them. A little handle over there. The more usual way to have it would be to be around your neck. Um, and as you can see on the back here, there, there's quick release clips. Um, and the, the bag itself comes with um, its own strap, which simply clicks into the into the one into that and like that. Um, the strap has its own slider, so you could adjust the, the length of it. Um, but then within the case, I'll show you quickly. We just open it up. This is over here. And this is the first time, first for me, is that a, a field bag, as it calls, as opposed to a carry bag, comes with its own instruction for operation manual. Um, and that's basically because it's just showing you how to um, attach the, the strap to the bag. But then they, what's quite nice over there is that they show you that you can carry it around your neck like that, or if you pull the strap a little tighter, you can actually use it um, and carry it around your your waist. Most most bags um, simply have a loop that you can then thread a you know your belt if, should you wear a belt. I mean I guess in this in this instance you don't actually need a, you know to have a belt. You can you can use the strap um, that that the case comes with. Right. So um, to gain access to the interior of the bag, as you can see, is, is via these these two zips. Um, which run almost the full length of, of the bag. Uh, zips are, you know, they offer a really good way of ensuring that it's completely closed and, you know, quite watertight with inside. Um, the one thing that, you know, um, on the downside to this, I guess, is the, the noise that it makes as you open and close it. You know, there could be some instances where this noise um, leads to you frightening away, a, you know, a potential sighting or something like that. You know, that's why sometimes a, a clip or something, a, a magnetic clip, um, can be better, but it's, it's not quite as secure as a zip. Um, you know, again, small little features, oops, blown away, um, like the fact that the, the, the zipper over here has, um, you know, a little leather, um, you know, thing over there, so that you know, it just makes it a very small detail, but just makes it easier to open and close. As you can see, once again, they've they've put their, their logo nicely on the front. Within the bag, uh, you have a number of compartments um, and separate pockets. This is great for you know keeping you know personal items, or, you know lens cleaning kits, etc. Um, should you need to, it's a separate pocket over there. And um, and if we look at the actual plenty of padding um, to protect the binoculars. One thing that I will also like to just quickly mention is the bag. The binoculars fit really nicely, even with the, the neck strap, into the bag, and and that's with the um, the lens covers on as well. Um, and you can easily close it up. I can't tell you how many bags are designed so tightly that it makes um, putting the binocular in, in another bag a real pain, and you have to you know every time you know pack them away with precision to make sure that, that you can actually close the bag up. Um, these it, it fits really nicely but you know not too tightly in that it makes it difficult to, to store your binoculars and if you if you're taking binoculars in and out you know a hundred times a day sometimes like like I am it gets to be a real pain um, to you know, when, if you have to struggle to do it every single time so there you have it a really good quality bag whilst you'll get a cleaning cloth with most pairs of binoculars these days um, almost none of them are of as good quality as the ones you get with these. 
Um, I'll show you, it comes in this little envelope here. Um, the quality of the, the actual cloth itself is, is superb and, and really um, as good as it gets. It's a really fine microfiber material um, that you can use to clean the lenses um, without too much fear of, of them being scratched. Um, on top of that, um, you're then given a, yeah, basically what they say is it's a lens cleaning kit. Um, well, it's not the whole kit. Um, to be honest, but um, this is a disposable um, moist cloth that you can use for cleaning your lenses once. Um, I mean, after that, um, I would highly recommend that you either get, you don't have to get the, the actual Swarovski lens cleaning kit, although um, it would be nice, um, but get a, a, a professional optics cleaning kit to, to clean the lenses properly without damaging any other coatings or the, or the lenses. So there you have it. That's the, a quick rundown of the main external features as well as the accessories on these Swarovski SLC 10x42 binoculars. For the full review, um, it contains loads and loads of information on, on everything including you know, all the optics, um, the specifications, but as well as my opinions on the, the actual view through them, comparisons with other binoculars, and uh, you know my thoughts of ha after having used them out in the field, but also um, you know, under the microscope um, back in my office. You know, please just take time to click on the link um, in the comment section below uh, that will take you through to the BBR website um, where you can um, see the full review. Uh, so uh, you know, until next time, you know, thanks, for, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.